Hello, everyone. Uh, I just want to say I appreciate you guys uh, joining us. And uh, I thought I'd give you a little background about uh, Subaru and how we use GE products. Um, I would, I'll start from the beginning and give you a little bit of where we were and where we are at currently. And then uh, we'll get into where we're going to go. I'll start out with just a small video, uh, kind of gives you a little bit of background on uh, what we've been doing. And uh, I'll let that begin. Subaru is the fastest growing automaker in the world. We really have been tasked with increasing our production capabilities in North America. Everyone in this plant is working hard to reach that goal. So we really have been using the softwares for anything from uptime improvement to getting into some of the predictive stuff. Like every other company in America, the officers in the company want more real-time data. Every single Subaru that runs down the line gets filled with antifreeze, AC charge, fuel. Well, we monitor every aspect of those fill. And then we also keep that data so that maybe six months down the road, you find out a car had a problem with the brakes. You can go back and look at that fill data and say, oh, well, we knew how much went in. We knew how long it took. We knew all the details about that fill on that certain car. I would totally recommend the software to other companies. This software has really made us accountable as far as the maintenance department of our equipment is working this way. It shows the data we need. The software helps us by tracking the vehicles throughout the plant. We're able to type in the vehicle number and know exactly where that is in the plant. So in our body assembly section, we currently have over a thousand robots. We have people on the floor that manage the daily production, respond to faults, but we don't always see where our main issues are at. And by monitoring the performance of the robots, we get that information and then we can direct our engineering and maintenance departments on what they need to be fixing. Our TPM process is structured with basically zero losses. So our goal is no downtime and the software helps us work towards that goal, I think it would be almost impossible to run at the operation rates that we're currently running without that software, without the visibility, and without the data to lead us to what we should be working on. The beauty of the GE products, all of them, GE does a lot of work testing. Anything that causes the computer to have a glitch means downtime to me. It's not acceptable. Honestly, GE's done a really good job of looking out for that to make sure we don't have those issues. Our new paint shop is all wheel driven for the conveyor system. It's like 1,400 different motors pushing the cars around through the, the facility. The fact that I can see each and every one of those motors and I can see it's having a problem remotely. The maintenance individuals can see that as well. I don't need a staff of 100 maintenance people here while the line's running. We can do it with 10 or less. The web HMI, we're really looking forward to getting that out into a tablet form or other forms right into the hands of the maintenance or even upper management so they can see what's going on in the plant real time. I can't wait to implement the new historian features some of the new HMI features that give better understanding of what the alarms are, so the drill down effects and things like that. I would wholeheartedly recommend iFix. As a matter of fact, here at Subaru, we are trying to expand iFix to all departments. It's something that has helped the paint shop and the trim shop greatly. I recommend GE to a lot of the vendors that we do business with. When we go down to look at issues they're having, I mentioned how I've used the product in different ways, not just the HMI pieces, the historian pieces. There are a lot of historians out there that do a lot of things, but GE's version of that is pretty much just like the rest of the software, open to other applications very cleanly. And we have a number of vendors that have, have taken that and, and really made improvements. We really want to make sure the customer gets what they're looking for, finding anything we can do to improve our process. We want to give a, 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 an excellent product at the end of the line. So as most of you might be aware, some of the automotive trends going, uh, uh, 
most manufacturers are really investing heavily into electrical vehicles, uh, automated automated driving cars, and things of that nature. Uh, Subaru's uh, going down those paths too. Um, we're at a, a little slower pace than than most. We we tend to, to focus more on a, the quality of the car and the environmental impact that it has to the world. By 2020, uh, all automotive manufacturers expect that 24% of their plants will be smart factories. Um, Subaru is w- working toward that, where we want more and more device interaction with uh, us to tell us, hey, we're having a problem. So S- Subaru is investing heavily into this uh, area of uh, industry. So here at Subaru, um, we build uh, the Subaru Ascent the Subaru Outback, the Legacy, and the Subaru Impreza. Uh, The facility in Indiana has uh, nearly 17 miles of conveyors. Uh, It were 3 million square feet, and we're expanding. Uh, It was just announced not to, I'd say about three months ago, we're expanding, and we're going to have a transmission plant on um, site. So we will build our own transmissions and not rely on them being shipped from Japan. Uh, Subaru is the only uh, Subaru factory outside of Asia, um, and we do about a quarter of the global production, so we do ship things out of the country. So as as you can see, you know, in 2006, we had a little bit of a, it was our turning point where Subaru was just building just over 100,000 cars. Uh, Now, I will say that 2009, the reason it's lower on the chart is uh, we changed the fiscal year um so the the way that the cars were counted were a little different but the the biggest thing on this is you see the upward t- trend that Subaru's having with their cars um more and more people are buying them they're they're becoming a, a more popular uh vehicle for everyone with the de- the growing demand uh of our vehicles we have to have our plant running as much uptime as possible We also really, really worry about the quality. We want the best cars getting to the customers. But we also want flexibility built into the cars where, say, in body shop, we want to change the color of the car and or maybe the trim. We want that flexibility going through the plant. Therefore, we can meet customer demands a little quicker. What we've done is uh, we've we use uh, the GE automation software. Uh, We use it throughout the plant. it's used for Andon systems. It's used for collecting data, and it's it's used to give uh, operators the ability to see things before they happen, and give them a little bit more reaction time. It also allows us to do a lot more tracking of vehicles to see if there was issues throughout the process. So here at Subaru, we we use Prophecy Historian. Um, it is a huge uh, implementation to our environmental and to our just overall production. The way we run it, we have 7,500 tags that are dedicated to either an environmental impact or an impact that could cause the line to not be able to produce a vehicle for some reason. And that could be a, a motor going that bad. It could be a robot having issues. We just want to trend that so we can get an idea of what caused the problem and what we can do to fix it next time before it becomes an issue. So again, I said uh, we keep, uh, I've separated the, the system out into two different types. Um, I have environmental data and we keep that for five years. And that's part of a, uh, a regulatory issue. We, we, we want to make sure we're we can see the trends over a given time and be able to prove to the environment and the government that we're not polluting or doing anything uh, illegal. So this data is very, very critical for us. And it's, it's something that we maintain and we will always make sure that it is collecting. That's why we use the historian. So on the daily issues, we capture three years of data. So the daily issues could be, um, something as simple as a motor failing, uh, or it could be a fault on a robot. It could be any number of things. We keep a three-year history of that so we can trend out and, and kind of prepare or see what we did last time to fix the issues. Um, as we get more and more involved into uh, AMP, 
uh, the asset performance management, this data is going to be huge for us because we're going to have a running total already. And we should be able to see some trends that helps us make better decisions throughout the production. So some of the things that we keep in the historian is oven temperatures. And we do this per zone in the um, oven. Uh, we keep top coat B, A, PVC. We also are uh, making it for the ability to actually drill down to know what that car's temperature or the oven's temperature was when that unit went through that area. Uh, this just helps out in not only uh, the environmental for aspect of it as us keeping track of that, but it also allows us to use it on the quality side to see if maybe one zone got too hot and it, it affected the paint uh, in some negative way. So this is an instance, we're, we're just starting to collect a lot of the motor data. Uh, we do have, uh, this is just one section of the line, uh, but you can see we're, we're collecting the hertz and the amps of the motors, uh, just you know, mainly uh, keeping the data so we can see if they're struggling. Uh, and when they do fail, if there was something that happened before that failure that we can identify, therefore not causing downtime to the plant, but we can maybe fix it before it becomes an issue and causing us an issue. And here's just an example that uh, the maintenance guys have. This is a, a real-time trending chart that they can go to. They can see, you know, the currents and the values of anything throughout the day. Uh, you can go back to a six month preview. You can go back to a four hours, one hour. Um, it basically gives the ability, hey, something was coming up. Maybe we can look back and, and, and track this and see why. Another uh, product that we use heavily here at uh, Subaru is Prophecy Plan Apps. Um, this one is how we, dis we keep track of all our downtime events. Um, and what, what I mean by downtime events is, is something that affects the line from its normal running. Um, as you can see on here, uh, in the reason trees, we have a door line or uh, a downtime cause. You drill down and we can find out if it was somebody pulling a yellow cord. A yellow cord on the, the line means somebody needs help. There's an issue and they need help. We can also track if a red light was pulled. That gives the indication that the line has to stop. We need a repair done right away. So when we get all that data, we actually put it into a different reports. Uh, Historian and uh, plan apps both play really well with SQL. So we're able to leverage SQL to get a nice Power BI uh, ports like this, reports like this. You can see the pull cord incidences, uh, the pokey faults. And pokey faults, just uh, for reference, is just a, an issue that doesn't follow the procedure. So if you were tightening, tightening three bolts and you went out of order, the pokey says, hey, you did it wrong. That's, that's what that means. Uh, and then we got equipment issues. And this you can drill down to and see exactly what piece of equipment was having the issue. And uh, maybe not lead you to the direct problem yet, but at least you can get close enough that you can start diagnosing it. And here's just an instant uh, feedback board. Uh, we call them and on boards. Uh, I took this on the weekend, um, so it's red. But normally, um, you would see green lines and up and running. Uh, plan stop means we were down for the weekend, so we knew it was that we were supposed to be down. But then there's also the the red events, other events that are going on, and it pops up, gives people the way to go and identify something immediately, so they're not looking or trying to figure out where the problem might be at on the line. Again, it's a it's a way to speed up the resolution to the problem. So the next part of Subaru's journey is uh, we're going to spend the next few months uh, implementing AMP, uh, Asset Performance Management. Um, this is uh, goes back to the motors and um, equipment uh, issues. We have a lot of data and now we want to put it into a product that we can actually start to try to predict things and, and see more and more um, trends and, and things of that nature. The whole idea and the, the concept of this is to actually get to where we're, we're taking downtime when we want to take downtime, not when the equipment says, hey, I'm broken and you need to come fix me. So again, I, like I said before, we have data. We have, we've been collecting data since 
uh, basically 97 with historian and plan apps. Um, we have a lot of data to go through. We just need to put it into something we can use to see it to help us make better decisions. So uh, after the, the, the AMP project, we want to move into the operation hub. We're really excited to see a product that we can develop with um, and get screens out quicker, get information out to people that need it uh, faster, and also provide people maybe that you know didn't even know the information existed, the, the ability to see things and react to things a little bit more efficiently. We're hoping to kick this project off in January, February timing. Um, so we're really excited about getting started on this and uh, uh, just can't wait. And I want to thank you guys for your time and uh, enjoy your day.